Hi, this is Igor from HDHand.com. In this Avidias tutorial, we're going to learn how to apply camera smoothing to handheld camera. A lot of times you have jerky movements in handheld camera that can be smoothed out using DS. And it's important to say that this technique is not limited to DS only. When you grasp the principles, you can apply it to just about any visual effects software. Recently I was working on a feature film where there were a lot of handheld camera shots. The movement was intentional, but the director felt it was a little too jerky, so we had to go and stabilize a bunch of those. Not fully, but just dampen the movement. It was something I'd never done before, and I wasn't sure how to go about it. So I want to give my thanks to all the DS artists at the DS Google group who gave me some basic pointers how to go about this technique. You probably won't hear this kind of terminology from a camera operator or a cinematographer, but essentially a camera can move along three axes, X, Y, and Z, uh, which we call translation, and it can also rotate around those axes in X, Y, and Z. What we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to focus on translation in X and Y to make this more simple, but frankly, a lot of these uh, unwanted camera moves can be mitigated by just working on X and Y, and uh, leaving the other movement of the camera untouched. Let's look at this camera move along uh, a path indicated in green where camera moves in Y, it translates in Y and X. So if I push play, you can see a relatively smooth camera movement. What happens in reality is that you will have more of a jerky movement like this. The red path describes more or less the same movement of the camera in space but it also has all these zigzag jaggies There will be unwanted movement that we want to remove out of this thing to make it smooth. So it's almost kind of like a high frequency jitter that we have to filter out to recreate this original path. On an actual shot, this unwanted jitter looks something like this. See, the camera is following the train, but it's also shaking a lot in X and Y. If we remove that shake, we have a lot more stable shot. And here goes one more time with picture in picture. You can see the upper right is the shaky shot and the big one is the stabilized shot. Alright, let's learn how to do this. I assume that you already have some knowledge of how Tracker and Stabilizer work in DS because we won't really spend too much time in explaining the basics of tracking or stabilizing. We'll select the shot, go to Video Effects, and pick Stabilizer. Stabilizer is essentially a tree effect. It has to be applied in a tree because it has two inputs. While it's selected, we'll click on Expand. Uh, we can scale this down so it takes up less room on the desktop. With the Stabilizer selected, we'll go to Reference and Control, click and drag our reference point to something that's a good reference. Of course, you have to pick a good reference that's unambiguous. Like, for example, these windows on the van would be pretty good because they're high contrast, but they're also kind of ambiguous because, see, there the are two rectangles next to one another. They look exactly the same. So I will pick the tire of the van. And uh, the playhead is parked at the beginning of the shot. We'll analyze the shot. With the analysis done, we're going to switch this to output. Go back to the beginning. And normally, Stabilizer is real-time. I'm using an underpowered uh, NVIDIA graphics card, so it is not real-time. If I click Control play it will step through the frames. So you can see now the shot is more or less perfectly locked. You don't really need a perfect Stabilize to achieve smoothing of the camera, because there will be movement in the shot in the end anyway, so a little bit of play is okay. But you can see that, that this shot is pretty well locked on that red van. Now with the shot all stabilized, we will make sure that the stabilizer is selected and go to the animation editor to look at the curves. Input 2 contains the tracking information, or I should say stabilizing information in this case. So I'm going to disable the view of input 1 for now, and I will also disable the view of confidence point for input 2 uh, because we don't really care about that. Next thing I'm going to do is we'll select the tracker X, copy all the points, control C, and go to the input 1 tracker X and paste. And we'll do the same thing for Tracker Y. We'll select it, Control C, select Tracker Y of input 1, and paste. So what's happened now is we have effectively undid all the tracking because wherever was stabilized, we're now taking the camera movement out and then we're putting the camera movement back into the shot, if that makes sense. And why did we put the camera motion back in? 
simply because we're going to rebuild the camera move now. I will select the animation editor, press F12 to blow it up full screen, and we'll work one channel at a time. I will turn off the Y graphs and make sure that the input 1X is selected. And I'm going to selectively delete some of the points on the graph, leaving the ones that, that represent the most extreme parts of the movement. We'll delete these points. And uh, these, actually, these. And uh, these points, because we're going to leave the inputs too untouched. And we'll, de we'll, we'll delete these. So um, we're left with a sort of a zigzaggy uh, straight line. And I'm going to select all the points, go to curves, spline interpolation. And now we're going to use the tangents to modify this move to approximate the original camera move but without all the jagged up and downs. In this case, I'm sort of averaging what the original move did in Y. It went down, went back up. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm making it smoother here, like that. And I'm sorry, I said Y, but that, that was the X move. So let's look at the Y. We'll turn off the X for both input 1 and input 2. Let's look at the Y. Make sure input 1 is selected. And looking at the Y motion, it looks like the best way to approximate would be to draw a straight line between the last, the first and the last keyframes. So I'm going to delete all the keyframes in between the first and the last one, leaving a straight line. As you can see, it pretty much goes, averages uh, between the ups and downs of the, of the original Y movement, which was uh, handheld and uneven, unsteady. It was, it was sinking down and raising up. We'll press F12 to minimize the animation view, and let's look at our curves again. This is the Y, and this is the X. And what did this do f to our move? Well, let's, uh, let's render this and find out. Here's the camera smoothing. We're following the train. And what you see up and down at the top of the bottom of the screen are the areas where there was extreme camera movement that's now stabilized. So this looks a lot smoother than uh, what we started from. Now, how do we eliminate these uh, mats at the top and the bottom? And, and very often you'll get them on the left and the right as well. We'll select the stabilizer, go to the DVE tab of the stabilizer, and blow up the picture until we lose those. Now, you have to jog through the shots to make sure that at the most extreme points, you have blown picture enough so you don't see, you don't see the black. And if you're working on file-based material that's larger than your current raster size, you can do this slightly differently where you blow it up before you feed it to the stabilizer so you're actually not losing any resolution. Your, your picture does not become any softer. Let's render this. So yeah, this looks a lot smoother than the original camera shaking movement. Thanks for watching this tutorial on camera smoothing. For this and other tutorials and to subscribe to the podcast of the DS Tutorials, you can visit hdhead.com.